Hey everybody, welcome to In the Red Zone. Sean Brown, Michael Johnson here, and today we're going to talk about uh, bowl games in particular and the idea of playing bowl games before the season, yeah. not at the end of the season. But before we do that, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, always leave a comment, and we'd like to respond to those. And uh, you know, welcome back to the 2022 college football season. Sean, bowl games. They're always boring at the end of the year. Yeah. Uh, some people tend to, you know, you just kind of, you're done at the end of the year. There's no reason to watch them. We're waiting for the big games and the playoffs. No, almost no attendance when you watch some of these games. Yeah. What about the idea of playing these before the season starts? Uh, there was an article at ESPN that, that brought this, uh, this whole idea up, mm -hmm. and there's been mixed reaction to it. What do you think about that idea? Um, <sighs> Couple things. I I usually kind of like to look at both sides of each issue when it's something this big and impactful to the sport. Um, I like the idea in theory. Um, I think it'll fix some things, but it'll also bring to head some issues that maybe we're not having now. Injuries being one of those things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, smaller schools that get you know, well over a million dollars to come and play. And I know those are boring games too. You know, you're kind of bookended with some programs with boring games, yeah. um, you know, at the start of the season, then the end of the season. But um, yeah, ESPN had this story that just kind of reimagined how bowl season would look and they would put it right in the, in the first week of college football um, to where, you know, your New Year's Eve six games would still say the same. Obviously, the college football playoffs would stay the same, but in the beginning, you would have all the other, you know, kind of just meaningless, yeah. sorry to say, with all due respect, but meaningless bowl games that would start out the year. Um, and so, you know, injuries could be one factor, but then you may not have so many opt-outs. It seems like within the last decade or so yeah. is when you really started to see an influx of, of yeah. opt-outs for kids that had aspirations, knew they were going to go in the first couple of rounds of the that, NFL draft. It all started a few years back. I think it was 2016, 2017. I'd have to look the year, but it all started with Denzel uh, Ward with Ohio State. Well, and Leonard, 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 Leonard Fournette, I remember, right. was one mm -hmm. that, um, you know, was talked about quite a bit. Yeah, I don't remember if every, he did. But. Every senior or every kid who's going to the NFL is opting out of bowl games. Right. Well. Unless they're playing in the college football playoffs. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm in favor of this. I think they would have to hammer out some details on what that's going to look like. Yeah. I think that game has to count as your first game of the season. So you um, think go, go have it be toward your record because I yes I've always kind of, I've always kind of thought man those first three games or maybe even do the 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 two uh you know if you're going to schedule FCS you know make it to where you have two preseason games mm -hmm. and then the rest of the year that counts towards your win loss because well, you really so, I mean I don't think the bowl games are relevant if it's if it's a preseason game or if, it's, yeah, if it doesn't true. count towards the record that's I true. think it has to count towards the record I think there's been I saw you know there's different iterations of this. And one of the things was, you know, do you take the previous season record and match up like we currently do with bowls? Or what I like yeah. better is the idea of you rank these bowls from importance mm -hmm. and the first bowl game, they get to pick who do you want to play each other. Yeah. The schools have no say over the scheduling and they are they get paired up and that first game of the year is your game. That would be awesome and because, because you would have for sure this year, if, if it, hypothetically, if it was this year, you know that unless, well, but here's the thing, how do you, how do you say, okay, these schools uh, play these bowl games, and then at the end of the year, these other schools get these New Year's Six games? How, uh, I don't understand if you're keeping the New Year's so, Six format. Right, so the, I, what the article had mentioned was, um, instead of having to go six and six to be bowl eligible, Every school's bowl eligible. So yeah. that week zero, everybody's playing. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter. You could play in a pre in the bowl game at the beginning of the year and still play it. The and end then of the, the, year. the okay. Yeah. So so my thought was if this was uh, if this was implemented now, for sure you would have a bowl that would be bidding out for USC versus OU or or something like right. that. You know, a coach yes. leaves. One yeah. school goes to another. There's, you know, which, which there's and rivalry the, the created there. The NFL does there. this with their scheduling on Sunday night football or Thursday night football. Usually, that first Thursday night game, 
is it's sometimes like a rematch of the AFC Championship. Or it's well, even the Super, the Super Bowl. Bowl. Yeah, so, uh, that's that's I happened mean, year not? after year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously the storyline with this year, the biggest storyline, there's several, but one of the biggest ones is Lincoln Riley leaving for OU. Yeah. That would be a heck of a bowl USC. game. Or yeah. USC, I'm sorry. And that would be a heck of a bowl game. People would watch. Yeah. And, he, and it, here's the thing. We have week zero coming up in about two weeks. Mm-hmm. And there's the Northwestern uh, Nebraska game played in Dublin, Ireland, which... I think it's interesting. Yeah. That's that's the best matchup. The rest of those matchups are not that great. Right. Vanderbilt, Hawaii, things like that. But you know what? I'm going to watch all of them yeah. because it's college football. It's the first week. Yeah. And so when you get to the end of the year, um, you know, after conference championship games, you know, some people do take a break and don't watch those bowl games because they're ready for the playoffs. Oh, yeah. But if it's the first game of the year, you're going to watch all everybody. Those. Yeah. And those stadiums are going to be packed. Yeah. And they talked about in this article about how bowl games are about tourism. Great, because this, this article mentions um, the week would start a week early, camp yeah. would start July, July 21st if it was this year, and then you have to start the season a week earlier. Great, start it a week earlier. Right. Because August is all about, you know, right now in August, all we have is what little information comes out from college camp, yeah. and you got meaningless preseason NFL games, which I could care less about. Yeah. I mean, the only reason you're probably watching an NFL preseason game, honestly, is you're just a diehard fan, or you play fantasy football and you're trying to get a, a grasp yeah. of who's out there before your fantasy draft. Really, yeah. why else are you watching those preseason games? Yeah. Well, if you think about it, college football, it's, it's, the, only, it's the only level of football for a lot of things. Um, you know, for the long time, they didn't have a playoff system. High school does, NFL does, um, and then every other sport in um, in college virtually have um, you know they have playoffs. Mm-hmm. So it's um, you know the the March Madness is just a big playoff. It's mm-hmm. a big tournament, um, and so I just think you know I would love there to be you know, maybe a scrimmage or two, you know, yeah. two teams that, that get to meet up. And, and I'm not saying this bowl, these bowl games are going to be that, but... Yeah. Um, well, they won't if they count towards your record. Right. So obviously. so maybe you move um, playing those FCS schools to like a, a scrimmage type or preseason, yeah. and then you have your bowl games that, that start off the season, then you go into your... Your pre, because yeah. so it could it could kind of head off your preseason, I, and then I've every, always been in favor of college schools having one, I wouldn't call it a preseason game, but one scrimmage, like a scrimmage, yeah. Because yeah. high schools do, they usually have two before yeah. the start of the season. College that doesn't. You go in that first game, and you don't, know. and you got to be ready to right. go, and, and so, everything counts. Yeah. But here's the thing: it's across the board, so everybody's first game counts against their right. record. Sure. So, but, but it would be nice to have a preseason game. That is, it's a little bit like a spring game. Yeah. Only it's full contact. There's no protecting quarterbacks or anything like that. It's yeah. a full contact scrimmage, but it is kind of a scrimmage. Right. And it doesn't. It it. And it's televised. In my mind, it wouldn't go against your red shirt um, status. You know, you you still have your four games that because yeah. this would be a scrimmage. It could even be, you know, dumbed down a little bit to where mm-hmm. you know you see the coaches on the field. They mm-hmm. could they it, you know it's. I don't know if it's timed or whatever, you know, just they, they could make up a, a and, and bunch me, of different let me rules. Add, let me add to that. We've kind of got off on the scrimmage thing from yeah. the bowl game. But if you had a preseason scrimmage, you could almost do with it like the NFL does with a preseason game where um, those that preseason scrimmage is uh, solely for the schools to sell to a local station to broadcast. Yeah, It's not on ESPN. Now, if ESPN wants to carry it, they have to pay the local station yeah. for retransmission rights. Yeah. But it, it's a, that would be a moneymaker for the school, specifically, and a chance for local media to get in on their well, local that's, team. Well, that's one less game, though, unless they add a game, which they probably won't. But yeah. that's one less game that ESPN gets, so they would fight that to the nail. But I think a scrimmage is added on in addition to what we already have. Okay. So yeah, I, yeah. I'm not saying take away a game. Yeah. Because it's a scrimmage. Right. You know, it could be... Your offense is out there for a series, running ten plays, ten plays in a row. It's not down in distance, just yeah. you know. And then they get off the field. You get the young guys in. It could be an hour. It doesn't have to be a full three well, even, hour even, um, scrimmage. Even even NFL teams will do co camp, not co camp, yeah. but they'll go and they'll you know go against another team yeah. in their camp, and they'll kind of have a little scrimmage. I mean yes. that that happens every single year. Um, and it's just silly or, to me that college football doesn't so have the same thing. It could be a, you could have the option of a scrimmage, or maybe 
you have a co-practice yeah. like the NFL. Yeah. So Oklahoma brings in uh, Tulsa or Oklahoma State, yeah. and you and they practice together. Yeah. Oklahoma State's a bad example. You don't want your rival coming in. You yeah. Know, you know, yeah. But, you know, they could get North Texas or they could get right. even, you know, something like that. Yeah. All right. Texas um, A&M. I mean, you or, yeah. get other Power right. Five schools in there to yeah. kind of... Missouri come yeah. down or something yeah. like that. Or Arkansas. And yeah. then you, you practice together, somebody close by or near, somewhat close by. And then at the end, you have a little scrimmage and maybe that whole practice is televised. Yeah. You know, I think that's a great idea. But I, I really do like the idea of bowl games to start the season yeah. because I think they're they're much more interesting. And at this point in the season, we are all, first of August especially, like everybody's just ready for football. Yeah. You know, I try to watch some of the NFL Hall of Fame game. You know, once you start getting into the threes, it's kind of hard to stay right. in, yeah. you know, interested. Uh, but the first half at least, you know, and then yeah. kind of tune out. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of the idea. I know Now, I will say I think coaches won't be because especially, you know, if you're Brent Venables, or you're Ryan Day, you know, you're going to be a team that's picked by one of these top bowls, yeah. and you're going to play somebody tough, and that is a possible loss to start the season, yeah. which is that's tough. True. Whereas if you're, a, let's say, a Vanderbilt, which these aren't teams that are in contention for the playoffs, but you know, you're probably going to play a much lesser tier team, and that's going to be kind of an automatic win. So yeah. it's 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 going to that would be a tough scenario for the top teams because well, the top they, teams are going to get selected. First. Then they need to. I mean, we've seen one loss teams get into the the playoffs every year, mm-hmm. um, but, um, but 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 I I think the argument is mute, moot once we expand the playoffs. Right. Once we're at so, 12 or 16 so if you teams, make, this doesn't yeah, matter. That, well, that was my thought, is if you make the regular season mean more, yeah. then that, that bowl game at the beginning of the season isn't going to be such a you know an impactful thing. Yeah. So if you expand the playoffs, 8, 12 teams, whatever, um, make maybe the, the conference championship count as a playoff game with automatic bids, um, that would make the regular season mean more. That would mean that one, maybe even two losses, doesn't just completely disqualify you from, right. you know, at the end of the year. Right. Um, and certainly once we start getting into the 12 and 16 teams, yeah. like you said, they're, they're going to have teams with a loss. Maybe two losses, maybe well, three at and that point. Because so. a, team that, a team that might win one of these bowl games and look like, you know, we've seen teams come in and we've seen Florida State in their first game be like, they look like they could go on to win the national championship this year, and then they go and completely fall off. Right. Yeah. Um, there's countless teams that do that. But um, if you know that you have something to play for, that first loss isn't just going to be detrimental to your season, yeah. And but they need to do other work on the back end of the schedule yeah. as well as if they are going to move this, which it's just being talked about right now. It's why yeah. we're talking about it. I think more people that talk, I mean, it was, it was the same thing with the playoffs. People started writing articles and, and yeah. getting the word out there saying that this is what college football fans want. Um, and yes, there are a lot of strings that need to be pulled to make something like that happen. But the more people that talk about it, the, the more well, it I'll becomes reality. What, college football is about, it's really about one thing. It's about money. Money. We know yeah. that. Yeah. And there is a hell of a lot more money to be made playing a bowl game at the beginning of the year when you can fill all those stadiums yeah. when people are excited as opposed well, to the think end about, of the year when it's an empty stadium. Think about, um, you know, and especially if you do it, you know, before people get into school so that yeah. families can actually travel. Exactly. Yeah, your last but, week of summer vacation before school starts. Perfect. Right. So, so then you can save up all summer and then, you know... Yes, it's exciting to get into college football already, but to know that your team is going to play in a bowl game at the yeah. beginning of the season, right. more excitement, just yeah. even... Imagine if this Vanderbilt-Hawaii game was a bowl game in yeah. Hawaii. Yeah. If you're a Vanderbilt fan, there's not much to cheer for when it comes to college football. Right. But you could save up and take a trip to Hawaii. Yeah. That would be exciting. Yeah. You'd be pumped up for, the, for your team for that first game, and you'd love to go to Hawaii. Right. So, yeah. Well, hey, that's our opinion. So uh, you're kind of in favor of it, right? Uh, kind of. The there's some there's some quotes here um, in this story that I just want to read off. Um, Appalachian State Athletic Director Doug uh, Gillen, um, he's on the Division One Football Oversight Committee. Said, "Your first reaction is, well, that sounds crazy, but maybe there's something to it. 
I do think it probably would a answer a couple of uh, couple things on opt-outs. In essence, a bunch of really cool kickoff games. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the dumbest idea I ever saw. Um, and let's see, American Football Coaches Association uh, Executive Director Todd Berry said, it has been discussed amongst some of the coaches. In the current environment, it might be a good time period to look at this idea because that many bowl games have turned into an exhibition games at the end of the season. An opportunity to play your young players at the end of the season, it might be even more beneficial to them prior to it. So that's just a couple of people who have yeah. weighed in. Obviously, the coaches are talking about it. The athletic directors are talking about it. Um, so we just need more and more people talking right. about it. If it is something that we as college football fans want to happen, and I think it's a cool idea. I mean, this, this landscape is ever-changing. Yeah. Um, who would have thought, you know, 20 years ago that we'd have even a four-team playoff, right. um, and now we have that. So, um, yeah, I just I, I think more and more people it, will start that, talking about it. That comment makes me believe that they still want it to be an exhibition, right? and it wouldn't count. To me, it doesn't work if it doesn't count yeah. because you still have the opt-outs. You have a coach. Your starting quarterback may not even play. Yeah. And now you're looking like an NFL Hall of Fame game where, uh, why am I what spending does it money even mean? Right. Mean? Yeah, it's got to count. You know, it's it's got to count, count. Yeah. so that your, your best players are playing in the game. Right. If they think that it's not going to count towards your win-loss, why even play in right. the game? Exactly. You know? yes. And then that, that's that much more money that's not being made on the exactly. games. And so... Yeah. They're gonna want the the good players to play. Right. You always exactly. want LeBron to play well, when they come to your if town. If you're Chick Fil A <laughs> and you're putting on the Chick Fil A bowl, right? You don't want the third string quarterback starting. Yeah. You want the starter. Yeah. You want the stars on the field because that's what you're paying for. Right. So that's what I said. Money talks in college football, and I think these these big sponsors putting on these bowls are going to say, wait, no, if we're gonna, you know, we want the best players out there. Yeah. Obviously, that's why we're even considering moving it because if you're not going to put the best players out there, you might as well yeah. leave it where it is. Right. There's no point in changing it. Yeah. So it'd have to count. It would yeah. have to count. All right, hey guys, thanks for tuning in for this episode in the red zone. Uh, thank you for watching. Always check us out on social media. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Like the video, leave a comment, and we will see you next time. Take care.